heat wears on defensive linemen, and some teams have more they can use, and some teams don't. All right, congratulations to interim head coach Brent Key and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets who did something yesterday they haven't accomplished since November of 2018. That's a win back-to-back -back games. Yep, a week after snapping their 13-game losing streak in the ACC, they knock off Duke in OT. And what a way to head into the bye week. At 2-1 and one in conference play, the Yellow Jackets are all alone in second place in the ACC's Coastal Division. Pretty cool. All right, Atlanta United's disappointing season has come to a close after a 2-1 loss to NYCFC earlier today. Their 10 wins this year, the fewest of any... All right, Zach, thank you so much. And thank you for counting on Channel 2 Action News. Don't forget to download our free news and weather apps on your smartphones and tablets. We'll see you again at 11 for WSB Tonight. Have a good evening. And ABC World News Tonight is next. Tonight, major new developments on the war in Ukraine. For the first time, Vladimir Putin's angry response to the devastating attack on a critical bridge connecting Russia to Crimea. The massive explosion destroying part of the bridge, a crucial supply route for Russian forces. Putin is calling it a terrorist act, blaming Ukraine. An ironic twist after the Kremlin launched a barrage of missiles aimed at civilian infrastructure, killing more than a dozen people. Members of Putin's inner circle are now demanding payback for the humiliating bridge attack. And after after President Biden's stark warning over the threat of nuclear Armageddon, how the White House is responding tonight. Britt Clinton standing by in Kyiv. Back here at home, the disturbing video from San Antonio. An officer fired after he shot a teenager who had been eating a hamburger in his car and then drove off when the officer opened his vehicle's door. Tonight, the teen's condition and why the police union will not represent the officer. The battle for control of Congress. Four weeks until the crucial midterm elections. Republicans line up behind Senate candidate Herschel Walker in Georgia despite the abortion controversy. Plus, sharp reaction to a speech by Alabama Senator Tom Tommy Tuberville, why some critics are calling it racist. The new missile launches from North Korea, where they landed, and are they a prelude to a nuclear weapons test? Protests raging in Iran, growing more brazen. Hackers infiltrate the airwaves by interrupting a newscast. Iranian women openly fight with security forces. Tonight, we hear from a protester inside Iran, concealing her identity, fearing for her life, what she's calling for tonight. The urgent search for a toddler missing since Wednesday. Today, police are going back over areas already searched as the FBI joins the investigation. New NFL concussion protocols are having an immediate effect. While the Dolphins' backup quarterback filling in for their injured star was forced out of the game. And the new development in Brittany Griner's fight for freedom. Could the WNBA star and another American be coming home soon? From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on this busy Sunday. I'm Lindsay Davis. As we come on the air, Vladimir Putin is accusing Ukraine of blowing up that critical bridge connecting occupied Crimea to Russia, calling it a terrorist act. Putin's words come only hours after Russian missiles hit civilian targets in the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia, killing more than a dozen people. This video circulating online shows the moment that explosion ripped apart major sections of the bridge. Russian officials say explosives were hidden in a truck traveling on one of the spans. The attack is a major symbolic blow to Putin and also damaged a critical supply route for Russian forces. These images show the aftermath and it comes as Putin's soldiers suffer new defeats on the battlefield. Tonight, the White House is reinforcing President Biden's recent warning of the possibility of nuclear Armageddon. Now Putin's inner circle is calling for revenge. ABC's Britt Clenet leads us off tonight from Ukraine. Tonight, rescuers pulling survivors out the rubble. <laughs> After a barrage of Russian missiles rained down on civilian targets in Zaporizhia in southeastern Ukraine. At least 14 people killed, dozens more injured. And for the first time tonight, Vladimir Putin calling Saturday's massive bridge explosion in Crimea a terrorist act carried out by Ukraine. 
This video circulating online showing the moment Russia says a truck bomb exploded, setting fire to seven train cars carrying fuel. The bridge engulfed in flames, a section of the roadway ripped apart. Before and after satellite images showing the damage. The bridge, both a vital supply link for the Russian military and a key symbol of Moscow's claims to the Crimean Peninsula, illegally annexed in 2014. Russia now saying some bridge traffic is flowing again. Ukraine hasn't directly claimed responsibility, but an advisor to Zelensky called the bridge explosion a beginning, saying everything illegal must be destroyed, everything stolen must be returned to Ukraine. The attack a day after Putin's 70th birthday, dealing him another humiliating blow as Ukrainian forces break through battle lines in the south and east. Ukrainian forces liberating more villages as they advance towards the center of Kherson. They've now managed to retake more than a thousand square miles over the last two weeks alone. Putin's repeated nuclear threats and uncertainty over what he'll do next, prompting President Biden to issue a stark warning Thursday at a private fundraiser, saying, quote, we have not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. The White House tonight responding. What the president was reflecting was that the stakes are high right now, given what, what's going on on the battlefield in Ukraine and given the very irresponsible and reckless comments made by Vladimir Putin in just the last uh, few days. We heard that ominous warning from President Biden. Britt Klenet joins us tonight from Kiev. And Britt, now that Putin has accused Ukraine of terrorism, what are those in his inner circle demanding? Well, Putin was already facing criticism from nationalists for his recent battlefield losses in Ukraine, but this bridge attack, Lindsay, it's triggered a chorus of anger from Russian hardliners whose calls are growing louder. They want a strong retaliation for the bridge attack, one Putin ally saying terrorists must be treated unequivocally. Lindsay. Britt, thank you. Back here at home, a San Antonio police officer has been fired after body camera video showed him shooting a teen in a McDonald's parking lot. Authorities are investigating and, and not decided whether to file charges. The police union tells ABC News it will not be representing him. The teen remains in critical condition. Here's ABC's Irene Shaw. Tonight, a San Antonio police officer fired after shooting an unarmed 17-year-old Eric Cantu as he and a female friend ate in their car in a fast food parking lot. According to authorities, rookie officer James Brennan was initially responding to another call at this McDonald's last Sunday. I got a vehicle over here that uh, fled from me the other day. According to police, he turns his attention to a completely different incident. This maroon car in the parking lot, believing it was a vehicle that fled from him during an attempted stop the night before. Get out of the car. Body camera video shows the officer opening the car door without any warning. Brennan reported that Cantu shut the car door, hitting the officer as he reversed. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Brennan starts shooting at the car multiple times as it drives off. Police found Cantu a block away with multiple gunshot wounds, placing him in the car, but not before placing him in handcuffs, arresting him for evasion and aggravated assault. The officer fired just days later. The San Antonio Police Department saying Brennan was in violation of department training, tactics, and procedures. Cantu's friend in the passenger seat was uninjured, but Cantu was taken to the hospital where he remains in critical condition. It's very hard to think about the fear he had in him when it happened and you know the state and condition he's in right now is just it it breaks all of our hearts he had no weapon he had a burger in his hand you know and tonight the police union telling abc news it will not represent the former officer because he had not finished his probationary period as for cantu all charges against him have been dropped Unclear if that officer will now face charges. Irene, thank you. Tonight, the battle for control over Congress is heating up with a little more than four weeks to go before the critical midterm elections. One race that could help decide it all, the closely run Senate contest in Georgia, where prominent Republicans continue to defend former football star Herschel Walker. More now from ABC's White House correspondent, Mary Alice Parks. Tonight, a month from Election Day, all eyes on the Senate map as both parties sprint for control. The Republican charged with winning a GOP Senate majority, Senator Rick Scott, headed to Georgia this week alongside Senator Tom Cotton. 
The two hoping to boost their candidate, Herschel Walker, who's been embroiled in controversy after allegations in the Daily Beast and New York Times that he paid for a woman to have an abortion and urged her to have a second. Walker denying the allegations and sticking to his staunch anti-abortion rights rhetoric on the trail. I said this, this here, the abortion thing is false. It's a lie. Almost two years ago, Georgia decided it all. Democrats' big wins there gave them their crucial 50th vote. Republicans hoping the state will flip back red this year. Right now, 538 calling the Georgia Senate race a toss-up, but saying Senator Raphael Warnock is slightly favored to win. They forecast Democrats have a two in three chance of holding on to the Senate majority. But Republicans are also making a major push out west in Arizona and Nevada. Former President Trump Saturday campaigning in rural Nevada for Senate candidate Adam Laxalt, who's challenging Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. Alongside Trump at that event, Alabama Senator Tommy Tupperville, who turned heads with these comments critics are calling racist, referring to black Americans as people who do crime. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Mary Alice Parks joins us now from Capitol Hill. Mary Alice, it seems like many of the races in those key battleground states are already kicking into high gear. Yeah, Lindsay, you can really feel the final push right now. We're expecting some big names on the campaign trail this week, like former Vice President Mike Pence. And we count at least five debates in some of those most closely watched races this week. And of course, early and mail-in voting has already started in many places and will begin in a few more states this week, too. Lindsay. Mary Alice, thank you. Tensions on the Korean Peninsula are rising after two more missile launches by the North. South Korea says the two projectiles fell in the waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. The launches were the North's seventh round of tests in just two weeks, and they came hours after the U.S. and South Korea wrapped up drills off the coast. U.S. officials do think North Korea is gearing up for a new nuclear test. Now to Iran, where violent anti-government protests are intensifying and spreading. Hackers successfully targeted the state's evening newscast, newscast interrupting the program for several seconds with a message in solidarity with the protesters calling for people to join and rise up. Those demonstrations are now entering their fourth week. Here's ABC's Lama Hassan tonight from London. Tonight, demonstrations spreading. Iranian women bravely going head to head with security forces. Protests erupting at universities across the country. They are calling these demonstrations the beginning of a revolution. Acts of defiance infiltrating the airwaves, hackers targeting an Iranian state TV newscast, a mask appearing on screen followed by a picture of the supreme leader, the Ayatollah, surrounded by flames, with pictures of four young women allegedly killed by police. The protest starting four weeks ago with the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini for allegedly wearing her hijab improperly, now a fight for regime change, fearlessly putting their lives on the line. ABC News obtaining audio from one of those protesters inside Iran. We are not naming her for security reasons. People all around the world should know that women have been suffering so much through these years and enough is enough. Local media reporting the latest victims were two teenagers, Serena Esmail Zadeh, a popular vlogger on YouTube, and Nika Shakarami, both killed. For freedom. The show of solidarity now worldwide, from movie star Juliette Binoche to the women of Iran are free. To a politician in Sweden's parliament, women cutting their hair, now becoming a symbol of resistance. Lindsay, Iran is being gripped by many protests in the past, but what's different about these demonstrations is the sheer determination of these women and their continued defiance. Lindsay. Lama, thank you. Now to the deadly ambush at an Israeli checkpoint in Jerusalem. An Israeli soldier was killed, three others wounded. When a gunman opened fire, the shooter fled. Israeli authorities have arrested at least three Palestinian suspects after a massive manhunt. The violence takes place as Jews prepared to celebrate the week-long Sukkot holiday. Back here at home, the FBI has now joined the urgent search for a missing toddler from southern Georgia. Officials are holding out hope of finding him alive. Here's ABC's Faith Abube. Tonight, the urgent search for missing Georgia toddler Quentin Simon intensifying. Investigators, including the FBI, re-canvassing, quote, specific areas looking for the 20-month-old. It's been horrible. Um, I keep picturing his face. Quentin reportedly last seen Wednesday at 6 a.m. in his Savannah home wearing a light blue Sesame Street shirt and black pants. 
Police say Quentin's mother reported him missing more than three hours later at 9.40 a.m. I hope he's still alive. Uh, we don't know. We don't have any inf information to believe he's not. For days now, authorities searching by air and by land, including a nearby pond for the little boy. Still, no answers. Quentin's grandmother, Billy Joel Howell, talking to reporters. I don't know what to think right now. I don't know what to believe I mean, because we, we, I don't think anybody ever believes that this is going to happen to them. According to ABC News affiliate WJCL, Howell has legal custody of Quentin and his three-year-old brother. And just last month, filed court documents to evict her daughter, Quentin's mother, and her boyfriend from her home. But police say there doesn't appear to be a custody dispute. And Lindsay, police say all parties were cooperating with the investigation. They also say they have not issued an Amber Alert for Quinton because there's really no indication at this point that he was abducted. Lindsay? Faith, thank you. We'll stay on that. Tonight, new NFL concussion protocols are now in effect. The league and the players union agreed to the changes this weekend following the uproar over the injuries to the Dolphins' starting quarterback. Here's ABC's Phil Lipoff. The Dolphins with a new starting quarter. Tonight, those new protocols already in action on the gridiron. The NFL and Players Union agreeing to tighten the rules dictating when a player must come out of the game after taking a hit to the head. Heavy pressure. They were bringing sauce. The Dolphins, Dolphins backup quarterback Teddy Bridgewater tackled on his very first snap of the game. The team pulling him out per the new concussion guidelines. Ironically, those guidelines in place because of this hit to Dolphins starting quarterback Tua Tungabailoa. It's a neurological response to head trauma. Sacked, his head hitting the ground, his fingers spread wide and frozen in front of his face. Just four days earlier, taking this hit. Oh, he's woozy. Stumbling as he got up. The team saying it was a back injury. And the Tonga Valoa passed the concussion protocol, so he was sent back in a few snaps later. An investigation finding while concussion protocols as written at the time were followed, the outcome is not what was intended when the protocols were drafted. The League and Players Association now agreeing if a player has an abnormality of balance or stability, motor coordination, or dysfunctional speech, he will be prohibited from returning to the game. A concussion can be deceiving because someone may recover and look completely normal to the outside world, but it doesn't mean that they aren't experiencing neurologic impairment. Lindsay, the NFL has tried to limit head trauma before. The league tells us that better performing helmets have contributed to a 25% reduction in concussions each of the last four seasons. And in 2018, they made a helmet to helmet hit a major penalty. Now with these guidelines, they hope to reduce head trauma even more. Lindsay. Trying to make the game safer, Phil. Thank you. And there's still much more ahead on World News tonight this Sunday. The frightening scene as shots are fired at a high school football game. And the school bus driver hailed as a hero for rescuing a toddler. With thyroid eye disease, I hid from the camera. And I wanted to hide from the world. For years, I thought my TED was beyond help. But then... I asked my doctor about Tepeza. Tepeza is the only medicine that treats TED at the source, not just the symptoms. In a clinical study, more than 8 out of 10 patients taking Tepeza had less eye bulging. Tepeza is an infusion. Patients taking Tepeza may have infusion reactions. Tell your doctor right away if you experience high blood pressure, fast heartbeat, shortness of breath, or muscle pain. Before getting Tepeza, tell your doctor if you have diabetes, IBD, or are pregnant or planning to become pregnant. Tepeza may raise blood sugar even if you don't have diabetes and may worsen IBD such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Now, I'm ready to be seen again. Visit mytepeza.com to find a TED eye specialist and to see Bridget's before and after photos. If your business has five or more employees, you may be eligible to receive a payroll tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee. The challenge is getting your hands on it. That's why we founded GetRefunds.com to cut through the red tape and get you the money with no upfront cost. This tax refund is only available for a limited time. So get to GetRefunds.com to see if you're eligible. That's GetRefunds.com, powered by Innovation Refunds. Born in 1847, formerly enslaved, started buying land, was in the House of Representatives, finding out this family history. These things become anchors for your soul. 
Liz, you nerd. Cough if you're in here. I took me some XTM for my phlegmy cough. What about Rob's dry cough? Works on that, too, and lasts 12 hours. 12 hours? Who studies that long? Musin XDM relieves wet and dry coughs. The number one brand doctors trust. Tonight, a two-year-old from Michigan is safe and sound thanks to some quick thinking by school bus drivers. The child's parents flagged down a bus in Kentwood last week, telling the driver they'd been carjacked with the toddler inside. The driver then radioed colleague Sue Figueroa heard the call and recalled seeing a child. She went back and found the toddler sitting in a driveway and drove him back to his very relieved parents. Tonight, the search continues for whoever opened fire during a football game in Toledo, Ohio, Friday night. Local Local broadcasters captured the moment gunshots rang out. The game between Whitmer and Central Catholic continued for a moment. Then the crowd ran from the stands. Two adults and a student were shot. All were treated for non-life-threatening injuries. When we come back, a new development is Brittany Griner fights for her freedom in Russia and deadly landslides with rocks, mud, and trees sweeping through neighborhoods. What will you do? What will you change? Will you make something better? Will you create something entirely new? Our Dell Technologies advisors provide you with the tools and expertise you need to do incredible things. Because we believe there's an innovator in all of us. New Astapro Allergy, now available without a prescription. Astapro is the first and only 24-hour steroid-free spray. While other allergy sprays take hours, Astapro starts working in 30 minutes. So you can Astapro and go. With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you grow and protect your wealth. They'll help you create a flexible strategy designed to balance growth and guaranteed income so you can enjoy the life you've created. That's the planning effect from Fidelity. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin, not me. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. Hide my skin, not me. And for kids ages six months and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. With Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. And Doug. It's nice to unwind after a long week of telling people how Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Shoot. Woo! I'm on fire tonight. Yes! Limu, you're a natural. We're not counting that. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. To the index now, and we're just getting video of landslides that have devastated parts of Venezuela. Days of torrential rain have overwhelmed the region, damaging, dragging mud and debris through neighborhoods. At least 22 people have been killed. Dozens of others are missing tonight. Venezuela's president says 20,000 rescuers and first responders have been deployed. Here at home, fall arrived in much of the east this weekend, but a warm-up is expected in the days ahead. In the west, the heat wave that started in the summer could stretch into late October with a above average temperatures and wildfires have forced authorities to issue air quality alerts in Oregon and Washington state. Tonight, a former top U.S. diplomat says he is cautiously optimistic that two Americans, including Brittany Griner, will be released from Russian custody by the end of the year. Bill Richardson, who served as ambassador to the United Nations, met recently with top Russian officials and told CNN he believes Griner, a WNBA star, and Paul Whelan, a Marine veteran, will be part of a prisoner swamp. Richardson says he's working 
home for the families, the White House has not sanctioned his efforts. Tonight, a new chapter for Anna Sorokin, the convicted swindler who inspired a Netflix series. Sorokin is now on home confinement in New York after being released from U.S. immigration custody. She vows to fight deportation to Germany. Now 31, she was convicted in 2019 of stealing $275,000 from banks, hotels, and rich New Yorkers by posing as a socialite. When we come back, America strong, the quarterback reaching her goals on the gridiron. If you have COPD, ask your doctor about Breast Tree. Breast Tree gives me better breathing and helps prevent flare ups. Before Breast Tree, I was stuck in the past. I still had bad days. <coughs> flare ups, which kept me from doing what I love. My doctor said for my COPD, it was time for Breast Tree. Breast Tree gives you better breathing, symptom improvement, and helps prevent flare ups. Like no other COPD medicine, Breast Tree was proven to reduce flare ups by 52%. Breast Tree won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. It is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Don't take Breast Tree more than prescribed. Breast Tree may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Can't afford your medication? Astra. Zeneca may be able to help. If you have COPD, ask your doctor about breast tree. Good luck. TD Ameritrade, this is Anna. Hi, Anna. This position is all over the place. Help. Hey, Professor. Subscriptions are down, but that's only an estimated 15% of their valuation. Do you think the market is overreacting? How do you know that? The company profile tool in Thinkorswim. Yes, I love you. <laughs> Please ignore that. TD Ameritrade, award-winning customer service that has your back. If you think you have Dupuytren's contracture, there's a simple test you can take from anywhere. Try to lay your hand flat against the surface. If you can't, you may have Dupuytren's contracture. Talk to a hand specialist about your options, including non-surgical treatments. Ooh, the Chewy app. Clumping litter, salmon pate. We have enough to splurge on catnip toys. I feel so accomplished. Pet me, please. Great prices, happy pets. Chewy. When you live with moderate to severe Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, your day can be full of reminders of your condition. Never knowing. Always wondering. You weren't made for UC or Crohn's, but gut-focused Antivio is. Antivio works at the site of the problem to block certain inflammation-causing cells from entering the gut. Infusion and serious allergic reactions can happen during or after treatment. Entivio may increase risk of infection, which can be serious. Although unlikely, a risk of PML, a rare, serious, potentially fatal brain infection, cannot be ruled out. Tell your doctor if you have an infection, experience frequent infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Liver problems can occur with Entivio. In clinical trials, Entivio helped many people achieve long-term relief and remission. Ask your doctor about Entivio. Entivio, Entivio, Entivio. Celebrity Jeopardy! New tonight, 8, 7 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Got a big day ahead of us. Be safe out there. <laughs> Get it. Finally tonight, Wisconsin loves its football, and the residents of one town are showing some serious love to their new star quarterback. She is America Strong. The homecoming game at Pewaukee High School in Wisconsin Friday night was one for the books. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Pewaukee High School. It was the coach who called this audible with the surprise announcement that for the first time, the starting quarterback would be senior Ava Matz. Number 13, Ava Matz. The 17-year-old has been playing one sport or another since she could walk. She started playing football in eighth grade and has been playing on her high school's team since freshman year, proudly sporting the number 14 the entire time. Our boys at first were kind of like, you're playing football, but now I... I don't think they could see me anywhere else. It's not a novelty, and it's not some kind of fad that she's on the football team. 
at Friday night's game, she quarterbacked multiple scoring drives, ultimately leading the Pirates to a 66-6 victory. At first, it was a little kind of like hard to kind of be like, where is my place? Do I get to speak up? Like, where is my role? And now being a senior, like I realized my role is to speak up and to be included and, you know, to like help others find their place too. Ava is now making her own playbook with the hopes that others will have the confidence to reach for their own goals in any arena. Dreams can come true and you just have to keep following your goals no matter how long and how hard they can be. It's always worth it in the end. 66 points in her debut game, not too shabby. Thanks so much for watching. David Muir, right back here tomorrow. I'm Lindsay Davis in New York. Good night. At Georgia Power, we're making smart investments today so we can continue providing clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy to Georgians for decades to come. That includes investments in renewable energy, like solar, which have helped make Georgia a top 10 solar state. Now increasing our solar energy capacity by 70% and planning to double our renewable generation, we're making investments to strengthen the electric grid and protect our environment. We're building Georgia's clean energy future today. For Imprint, this is Lisa. Hi, I'd like 50 welcome wows and 300 customer. I love it. Promotional products from For Imprint are certain to deliver. Ooh, yes. Wow. I love it. Find some wow now at forimprint.com. For Imprint, for certain. My dad made the brilliant move to get us T Mobile Home Internet. Which... We have to share our signal with the entire neighborhood. Yeah, now we do some weird things to get our speeds. Well, I'm up. Come on, kids. This sucks. Well, if you just switch, maybe you don't have to be there. Oh, yeah. okay. We don't really use the V word. Kind of insensitive. Yeah. We prefer pro lunar. Much better. Get Xfinity Internet for $55 a month for 12 months with no annual contract and unlimited data included. Switch today. Why is Georgia outperforming the rest of the nation? Because we said no to everything Stacey Abrams wanted to do. She demanded more COVID lockdowns. She wanted schools and businesses closed, like in California. Abrams wanted to eliminate cash bail, pushing the same scheme that's fueling crime in New York. And Abrams wanted job-killing higher taxes over and over and over again. Georgia's doing better because we didn't do any of the things Stacey Abrams wanted. Back again, huh? <laughs> you must love losing. You're buying the next one. You've got to win one first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mix and match your two favorites for $3.29 at any size soft drink for a dollar. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Time and temperature. Sponsored by True Natural Gas. Switch today and save. Hi, I'm Jennifer Long with your Cash 3, Cash 4, and Georgia 5 evening drawings. Now through October 30th, it's Kino Bonus Hours, where you get an extra 30% on all winning tickets. Bonus hours are every Sunday, 1 to 3 p.m., and every Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. Play Kino online or at retailers. Now, let's play Cash 3. Your numbers are 1, followed by 7, and finally 4. Those numbers again are 1, 7, and 4. Good luck. And your cash four numbers are three, followed by eight, the number six, and finally four. Those numbers again are three, eight, six, and four. Congratulations. Now Georgia five. Your numbers are five, followed by zero, the number two, the number five, and finally four. Good luck. Justin Farmer, Linda Stouffer, weekdays on Channel 2 Action News at 6. He's on. Spoiler alert. It looks like this. For some people, the anticipation is the best part of the experience. For instance, the flight is their favorite part of the trip. The menu is their favorite part of the meal. So, 
It stands to reason that for many of you, watching me on stage before any of the funny videos start playing is your favorite part of the show. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah. A host can dream, can't he? Yet another reason construction crews don't hire children. Be mad. He specifically built that thing so he wouldn't have to run. Okay, Olivia, you want to see videos with wheels? Well, I've got some that are 